Welcome to the Joy of Music. Featuring the First Lady of the Organ, Diane Bitch. We invite you to meet great composers and performers. Travel to Europe's ancient monasteries and snow-covered Alps. Visit great historical cathedrals and beautiful lakes and gardens. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him with a psaltery and harp. Praise Him with a trumpet. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And now, Miss Diane Bitch. Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today we are delighted to share with you excerpts from a live concert at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with special guest Christopher Parkening, America's leading classical guitar virtuoso. I would like to begin the program, however, on the great 117 rank Rufati pipe organ with the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. Parkening, the foremost classical guitarist in the world today, was hailed as a musician of great promise at a young age. His former teacher, the legendary Andre Segovia, proclaimed that Christopher Parkening 
was one of the most brilliant guitarists in the world. His artistry has enthralled millions. Christopher Parkening has played in most of the great music centers of the world and with the great symphony orchestras. He has been nominated for several Grammy Awards and has won numerous other awards in the field of music. It's a great pleasure to have him today on The Joy of Music. And now let's listen to the music of Christopher Parkening.
Chris, I would suppose that one of the questions that most people ask you is how you got started playing the guitar. Yes, well, I started playing the guitar really through the inspiration of a cousin of mine, uh, Jack Marshall, who at that time was staff guitarist at MGM Studios. I was 11 at the time, and he would come over to our home and play, and I loved the sound of the instrument. And when I asked him about starting the guitar, he suggested that I start with classical guitar because I could have much more technique uh, if I first learned the classical style and then go into any, any other style with much more technique. And he also told me to get the records of Andre Segovia, who oh, he yeah. said was the greatest guitarist in the world, and so we did that. And I started classical and stayed with it. That's how you started classical, rather than, than a, a popular or, or guitar That's right. or jazz guitar or whatever? Exactly. With Jack's help and inspiration, I started classical. And then you went on to work with Mr. Segovia. Yes, that was a, a great honor. I had played a, a concerto in D major by Mario Castano of Tedesco, who was a composer in Los Angeles, who incidentally wrote the very first guitar concerto ever written for uh, the guitar and orchestra, the concerto in D major. And I had played that in Los Angeles, and a tape was sent of that performance to Segovia in Spain, requesting a scholarship for me at Segovia's first United States master class at uh, the University of California at Berkeley way back in 1964. So that was the first chance I had to study with him. I'm sure that students who are watching the program today would be interested in, in knowing how much time you spend with your instrument and just how much work is involved at becoming a, a, a great as you are. Uh, well, I asked Segovia a, a, a question some years back, I was having lunch with him, and I said, Maestro, how many hours a day do you practice the guitar? And he said, Christopher, he said, I practice two and a half hours in the morning and two and a half hours every afternoon. And I thought to myself, if Segovia needs to practice five hours a day, how much more do I need to practice? Mm. Um, I think to, to uh, do your best at, at anything, you have to uh, work hard and pay a price uh, and the price is self-discipline, and you have to pay your dues. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and in the in the grace of God, and depending on Him, um, He'll He'll have you where He wants you to be. Um, I very oftentimes feel very inadequate about my guitar playing in terms of my ability, and yet I think of the verse in Second uh, Corinthians twelve nine and ten where Paul says, "I." boast in my inadequacies that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Um, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. So mm -hmm. I, I believe that and, and uh, I'm grateful for his grace. Are most of the concerts you play by yourself or are they with other groups or ensembles? Well, they're kind of split in half. About half are solo concert dates, and the other half are with symphony orchestras, concertos for guitar and orchestra. But the solo concerts that I play, um, uh, a fellow uh, guitarist, David Brandon, joins me for the last part of the concert, and we play duets. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a real, I think, a, a good addition to the to the concert and something that I enjoy doing very much. Now, is his part an accompaniment or is it really a duet? Uh, not always. It's a very much a, a duet. Uh, we will share the parts uh, uh, very equally many times. And he's a fine guitarist and, and I'm proud to say, too, a brother in Christ mm -hmm. as well. Have you known each other for quite a while? Quite a while. Uh, David uh, studied with me uh, many years ago when I was teaching at Montana State University. That's when I first met him. And he's also a student of Andre Segovia.
The classical guitar is such an intimate instrument. Did you ever want to play an instrument with a great big sound, like a <laughs> trumpet or an organ? Like this or organ. You know, um, I guess I fell in love with the sound of the, of the guitar at an early age and, and uh, just uh, pretty much stayed with it. I have heard you play this wonderful organ, and at times I uh, feel cheated in a way that our instrument has a much smaller sound. Uh, but uh, I've always loved the sound of the guitar, and I guess the intimacy of the instrument is, uh, and it's easy to carry around. That's a oh, big advantage. Oh, sure. <laughs> now, you're very fortunate to have something that you can carry around and play anywhere. Definitely. I know that you're playing over 80 concerts a year now, and I, I just wonder, how do you keep yourself motivated? You know, you've won so many awards, and uh, you've made so many recordings, outstanding recordings, and you do so many concerts. What really is your motive to keep going and to keep doing more? Well, uh, my motive uh, stems from my uh, religious convictions because I'm a Christian, as you know. Um, I desire to glorify the Lord with my life and with the music that I play. And, and uh, for me, that uh, takes self-discipline and hard work mm -hmm. in order to play the best that I can play. I, I, uh, I try and play each concert kind of dedicated to the Lord and play it for the Lord. And um, I feel that uh, that's, it's important to work very hard and to try your best each time so that uh, hopefully the Lord may be glorified. Tell me, as you look ahead and you look to your future, what do you want to reach out for now that you have uh, won so many awards and done so many successful things. What is it that you're reaching for now? You know, um, to be perfectly honest, I, I don't have a goal in terms of the guitar. I just desire to be a good and faithful servant of the Lord. And, and uh, what he brings along in my path, um, I uh, pray about, and if it's his will that I do it, I, I try and do it to the best of my ability, and, and uh, that's, that's really my desire, is to be faithful until the end.
Today on The Joy of Music, you have heard excerpts from a live performance at the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with a special guest, Christopher Parkening, the world's leading classical guitar virtuoso. We pray that you have been blessed and enriched by the music today. And we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music.